Hello and welcome back to another electro technology video. Today we're going to learn how to put an RCD in place of a circuit breaker. So let's have a look. So today I'm going to replace a circuit breaker on this demonstration board and I'm going to replace it with an RCD combination. The difference between a circuit breaker and an RCD is very simple. A circuit breaker is an overload current protection device, which means if the, the circuit breaker is rated at 10 amps and a uh, fault current appears on the circuit for whatever reason that wants to pull maybe 14 amps, then the circuit breaker recognizes there's too much current and it trips out creating an open circuit and therefore isolating the circuit and keeping it safe. But it only works as overload current, whereas an RCD is a residual current device. And that looks at the imbalance between the active and neutral. And if, if it sees a problem there, then it will trip out and create an open circuit and then make the circuit safe. At the same time, this one I'm going to install is a combination, which means it also has the overload protection of a circuit breaker as well. When you're installing this equipment, you need to make sure that you are getting both the combination. Otherwise, your RCD is not going to have that overload protection on it. So let's have a look at how we go about actually taking this apart and changing this to an RCD because it's not a simple process it's not as easy as just popping it out and putting a new one in. We do need to add a little bit of extra wiring. So let's get to it. Now, before we get started, we've got to make sure we have all the correct gear. So I have my pliers, insulated pliers. I have some screwdrivers. These are the three screwdrivers that I like to use the most. Uh, so that's a medium flat, a small flat, and a medium Phillips head. I find that I can do 90% of the jobs with just these three screwdrivers. Obviously, we need our RCD. So I plan on changing the 16 amp circuit breaker, which is controlling the circuit for the GPOs. That means I need to have a 16 amp RCD so that I'm swapping out like for like to get the correct current size. And I'm going to need some cable. In particular, I'm going to need some neutral wire. So I've just grabbed a piece of TPS lying around from another job here, and I'm going to utilize this. So I'm trying to minimize as much wastage as possible. So I'm just going to take this apart like so. That is the neutral wire that I want, the black wire. That is a pretty close to the correct length. So there probably won't be any wastage from this wire. Obviously, this is now no good as TPS, but I can take that apart and I could always put some of this stuff aside if I need some small earth wires or active loops for something else on another job. So I'll put that aside and this will get thrown away. Okay, so now that I have all of my materials I need for this job, I'm now gonna hook this board up, hang it up over on the wall and I'm gonna take you through the process of removing the circuit breaker, swapping it over for the RCD, and wiring in the extra neutral wire which is now required. Um, should be noted that as of January 2019, all circuits on domestic dwellings must be protected by RCDs. If they are currently protected by old rewirable fuses or circuit breakers, that's perfectly fine, but if there are additions or alterations made to that circuit, they have to be brought up to spec, which means you have to install one of these on there. So please keep that in mind. That is now mandatory for all circuits. It used to just be the power circuit and the light circuit. Now it's every circuit. So that's air conditioners, everything. So let's go hang this board up. Okay, so we have the board hooked up now. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cover. I've already taken the screws out, so that'll just lift off like that. So what you'll see at the moment is this circuit breaker here is kind of acting like a main switch. Usually the main switches will be red. Um, we've just 
we bought these at the time because it was cheaper than buying a main switch. So this is a 32 amp, which means it's got enough amp range to cover these other circuits. Uh, so a main switch, mind you, is also not a circuit breaker. So it does not have any um, overload current protection or anything like that. It is literally just a switch. So please keep that in mind. Now, the wiring for this, the way it works is the supply, which we have coming from this plug, comes into the main switch, through the main switch, out of the bottom of the main switch, and over to the top of the first circuit breaker. And then it loops to the other circuit breaker, and then each of the circuits then lead off to their respective places in the building. We need to change this one here on the end and make this one an RCD. Realistically, we would be changing all, both of these, but for today's exercise, we're literally just gonna be changing that one. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take off the link and I'm gonna take off the circuit wire that's heading out into the building. Okay, now that I've got these two wires taken out, <clears throat> obviously, um, if I was doing this job on a building, I would have gone through my seven steps of isolation to make sure everything is okay first. But of course, this is not hooked up. This is just a demonstration on the actual wiring. The circuit breaker is now free. Now, under the bottom of the circuit breaker, there is a little tab there, which I can just pull down with my pliers. There we go. And now it will just lift off. And if I turn that around, you can see how that mechanism works. It just clips in to what we call the DIN rail, which is at the back there. So now that's off, I can take that out and I can get the RCD ready to go on. Now, as you can see, the RCD has a very similar mechanism, which will allow it to clip onto the DIN rail. However, before we can connect it up, you'll notice we need some more wires. We need a neutral as well as our active there. And we also need a neutral and an active there. Notice that this tells you that this is the line side and this is the load side. So this is the side that obviously goes out to our circuit, just like we had it wired up before. And this is the side that's coming from our supply. So we need to bring a neutral from our consumer's neutral link to here. And then we need to run another neutral out to our circuit, which in the past, our circuit neutral would have been connected up to the neutral, consumer neutral link. That's no longer the case. So I'm going to grab a neutral wire and we're going to hook that up. So here is my neutral wire. You can see I've already pre-twisted the cable, ready to go through. So I'm going to pass this through here into the back. This will then go off to my neutral link. So I'm just going to fold that over so that sits like that and then I'm going to attach that to my neutral link over here. There we go. So on my, on my neutral link currently what I have is I have the consumer, consumer mains coming in and I have the uh, circuit load at the moment, which I'm now going to take the circuit load off and I'm going to bring the circuit load over to, back to here. And then this new wire that I've just fed through will then go to the consumer neutral link. That way it'll then give me the supply neutral and the load neutral. So you'll notice on our neutral link that we have here, this is the consumer neutral coming in. Uh, this is goes to the first spot on your neutral link. And then afterwards, we match up the neutral link numbers to the number of circuits. So Circuit number one would go in the first position. Circuit number two would go in the second position. And back here, this was our circuit number one, because remember, this is our main switch. That's circuit number one, and that's circuit number two. So the second position along, that will be the correct load neutral for that circuit. That has to be done so that if you're working somewhere where there's a lot of circuits, it's very quick and easy for you to identify which neutral is which, so that if you have to disconnect a circuit, you know exactly which neutral you are undoing because you don't want to undo a neutral to a live circuit because that would be not advantageous and potentially dangerous.
Okay, so I've tightened that up. You'll notice that I have made sure that the insulation reaches the edge of my mounting block there. It's not being pinched by the screws and there's no excess copper outside. That's a very good habit to get into. Even though this is gonna have a cover put over the top of it, you still want to do that because if you get into the habit, then when you do your other terminations, you'll still be abiding by the ASNZS 3000 standards, which is what we have to follow. Okay, so now I have my consumer neutral over here, and I will now bring in my load neutral. There it is there. Okay, with the RCD, what I will now do is I'll connect up the neutral here. Now keep in mind, when you're doing this, make sure that these screws are screwed all the way out correctly. Sometimes they're not, and then you try to put them in and your cable can get jammed just in the wrong spot there and it doesn't tighten up. So make sure that it's screwed out correctly on both ends. So you can see this one's a little bit different from this one and that way you'll know you'll get a good connection. So I'll put that, tuck that in like that, and then I'll screw that up. Now, at this stage, this screwdriver I'm using is a little bit large for this, this circuit breaker. And this is why I use a smaller one. So I'm gonna grab the small screwdriver and I'm gonna tighten that up with that smaller one. Never over tighten any of your terminations. Nip them up so that they're tight and it's not gonna come out, give it a bit of a wiggle, but don't over tighten it to the point where you're stripping the head of the screw. You don't need to do it that tight. It's not exactly gonna be rattling around, you know, on the, on the machine or something like that. Now I've put my active in as well. I'm gonna do the same thing, tighten up my active. So now my load side is connected, sorry. Now my uh, supply side is connected. I can now bring in the load side. Now you can see in this case, that copper is sticking out too far. Okay, so I'm gonna need to trim this off. So I'm going to unbend this, give a bit of a trim, re redo this, fix this up so it sits nicely underneath there. The active, is okay, but this neutral is not so good. So let's fix that. You would be surprised how often you go out to jobs and you'll find this is a case. Somebody else has been there before you, they've done some work, the work is not particularly brilliant and you have to then just tidy their work up. If you don't do that, you do run the risk of having faults in your circuit and there's a the potential for harm and the potential for fire as well. So please keep that in mind. There we go, that's nice even. My copper is not coming past my insulation, so that will fit quite nicely into the circuit breaker. The RCD, I should say, it's not a circuit breaker. There we go, looking good. I'll tighten that up. Occasionally, very occasionally, you can get defective devices. And this is a good example one. That screw is actually jammed in. I cannot get that to move at all. So this, this RCD is actually no good. I'm gonna to have to throw this one away and buy another one. But for the benefit of this exercise, I'm going to put that in and we'll just assume that that is correctly tied in. And then as we did before, when we took the circuit breaker off, we're going to bring that little latch down. That will hook onto the DIN rail. And then we'll push that latch back up so it stays in the right spot. I didn't put it on the DIN rail properly. There we go. Okay, so that's now sitting not bad. It's also, again, maybe this is just a, this particular brand of RCD, but you'll notice there's some movement there. It is on the DIN rail, but it's not really sitting very well. 
So that's something else to be a bit mindful of too. Different brands, they're supposed to all be the same, but that's not always the case. So be mindful of that. Um, always buy decent brands. What can you do? Anyway, it's in there for this demonstration. So now that's done, I can now put my covers back on and that is basically how you wire in an RCD, including when you come across problems. So, board's done, RCD is in. As you can see, sometimes things don't always go to plan. Um, this RCD was clearly faulty. Uh, it's very rare, but it does happen. And I'm kind of glad it actually did happen in this video because I can show you what you need to do when things do go wrong. That RCD doesn't sit nicely. The cover's now holding it in place, but realistically it should sit on that DIN rail correctly and tightly, but it didn't do that. The other issue was obviously that it, the screw would not screw down and hold onto our active cable. You can't leave a job if it is like that. Um, even if the screw is really tight, and you're screwing it, you know, it's, it, and, and you've got it, it's bitten into the copper. If that screw is really, really tight to turn by itself with nothing in it, then it is no good. Throw it away, get another one. Don't risk it. Okay, so it's installed and basically the way it works is you can test your RCDs because they have a trip button. So when they're energized, you can press the trip button and it trips it out and it, it checks to make sure that everything is okay. It's just a good way of testing things. That is it for learning how to put an RCD onto a board. I hope you got something out of that and I'll see you in the next video.